if this looks familiar, then I want to say thank you so very much for coming back, for clicking on another video. If this doesn't look familiar, then thank you so much for being here. If it's your first time, I really appreciate that you did click on this video. And I hope that you will enjoy what we're up to today. I am actually now going to unpack my Rinko Lelio Cattleya Sunya Green. And it is the one that we cut the rhizome while still in the pot. Uh, the beginning, maybe it was it April, May, something around there, because it was actually growing these growths here, these back two, these two. Let's see if I'm showing it to you. Yes. So this, this one, this kinked one, the wonky one, and the straighter one were just coming into growth. And I wanted to cut the back in order to provoke another lead here in the back. I can't see that it did anything whatsoever. But at the time, I was also um, very cautious about not removing the orchid as such from the pot because I didn't have new root growth at the time. And I didn't see much root activity in the back that was healthy. So now, throughout this 2020 season, it has grown two more growths. So I've had four in total and it is growing new roots down here. And I am going to take her out, repot her, rejuvenate the root system, taking advantage of this new root growth here. And then we shall see what happened with the rhizome cut. And we'll take it from there, decide whether she's going to get the back end potted up or what is going on. I've been meaning to do this for a while because, you know, curiosity killed the cat. Now, if you, when you see the roots down here coming through, these are not viable anymore because when I flush or whatever, I set the pot down on a table and then I crack them, unfortunately. So that is not because they're in the water reservoir. That's just simply because of what I do, like I'm doing now. I set the pot down and I have no way of protecting those roots that come out the bottom. But let's get on with this because I am super, super curious to know what is going on. And with four new growths, I am 100% sure this needs to be dealt with, taken care of. So let's see, let's see, let's see. Let's do all the squeeze, squeeze thing again. Uh, top it, get rid of what we can first so we have something to work with. And I can show you where the cut was, because if she does fall apart as I take her out, then uh, you may not be able to see what I did back in the day. I placed an old thin tag through the middle of the cut. Let me see if I, there, you can see that white line. I put cinnamon on each side of the tag. I wet it a little bit, cinnamon on each side and wedged the tag into the cut so that putting lecker over the top wouldn't be an issue. And back then, I also took the top layer of lecker off to see where I wanted to cut with tweezers. So that it, I didn't do any of what I just did. I didn't pour any lecker out. I just targeted what I wanted to see and then cut into the rhizome. So I'm gonna just right now, just try and focus on getting her out of the pot and see if we have had any kind of activity at all. Either way, this has to be done. This is not another 12 month issue. The new roots need space, the orchid needs space. And as always, I, unpot in the opposite direction of the new roots. Yeah, she's in here tight. So let's see how long I put you through what I'm going through and whether I shall be editing as from here on in. <laughs> the side roots are all loose. Maybe a little bit of a jiggle with the oldest part. Help me out here. 
I've done so many repottings, my hands are losing the ability to squeeze. These guys are giants in their own right. And I mentioned that I wanted to do this in my little tour video, which was a good thing to mention as well, because as I wasn't taking notes at the time, I have a reminder of who needs to be addressed. So this one took priority simply because I'm curious. It's hard as a rock. Gently, with patience, going round and round and round, trying to do as little damage as possible. But once we see what's going on inside, I can maybe be a bit more radical. So I'm trying to really get a grip on her. I don't want to break my pot. There is a little bit of give. Not much though. Not much. Who'd have thought, hey? Rock solid in here. So there is a little bit of background noise. And I hope that that doesn't interfere. Alrighty. Not like that, so we'll just keep squeezing. There's my little munchkin, you good boy. For anybody that's new, this is Thierry Henry, my little rock, my baby. Okay, um, yeah. So I've been working away, gently moving her, and I heard one of the loud, you know, when a, an orchid gives in the pot. You, I heard that and then it was, Time to bring you back into the fold. Look at this. Ooh, we like this a lot. A lot. I'm going to take you down a bit so that this thing is heavy. This thing is super heavy. I don't have to lift it up so much. So there we go. So, yeah, well, um, Okay, I think that we have my word. I have my work cut out because this is going to be taken apart C or C. Absolutely, I'm gonna take this, get rid of the old support and there will be root damage in the process. What I'm going to try and do is be cautious with regards to what's happening in the back here because if there are viable roots, which I did not see in spring, then I want to make sure that the back cut that's going to come loose will be able to sustain itself. You can see it's two pieces. So we are going to, can you, yeah, we are taking this one to town. When I'm confronted with a solid wall like this, I take my losses, collateral damage. I have to start somewhere. Root tips are going to be destroyed but it has to be also done in order to make sure that the long term, the orchid will be fine. And then I just start to rub around the root ball one by one. There's no point in trying to squeeze this. I just go around and around and start rubbing and peeling off all the leka. If this was an emergency repot, I would not be doing this at all. I would be finding a bigger pot, plonking it in and being very happy to let it just carry on growing. This is not an emergency repot. This is a rejuvenation of the root ball in order to ensure long-term health. And it doesn't matter that some roots will be compromised. I always say a ratio of two thirds of the root ball has to ma be maintained for the size of the orchid. Now I'm going to be dealing with two pieces, maybe three, I don't know, but I will make sure that whichever it is, that the main piece will have two thirds of its root ball maintained. 
But in order for me to even get a head start on anything, I go around and just start peeling, rubbing, dislodging lecker. And yes, it is a one by one process. One lecker bead at a time. Whatever gives comes off and then we can go on to the next layer and so on and so forth until we get into some kind of a insight of what and where we can take them apart. And that's what I shall be doing for possibly the next two hours. Bit by bit, round and round we go. When I reach a stage where I can see that my little massage rubbing of the individual leka has come to a stop, I start taking the roots off that I can see will either branch, grow again, or good or bad, I take them off so that I can get in there. And that is a very painful exercise. I rarely, rarely show it because people would think, what on earth is she doing? Well, when you have a root ball that is super healthy, you can go and be radical about it because what you're doing it's like bonsai. You're taking off the bottom to ensure the top. So it's not like it's going to hurt the orchid in any way to lose a third of her root ball. And I have to get in there. I have no intention of always bumping up orchids. I would love to be able to grow specimen size orchids. Definitely something. But then I would probably not be able to have the collection I have and I would be limited to maybe 60 because of my indoor space and I have to have that in consideration with all my repottings. It's getting a bit precarious already because I've got some divisions that I would like to grow on because they are nice. If they make it, then great. If not, I've tried. But if they make it, maybe somebody else would like to enjoy a division. And again, I don't sell my orchids. That's not the plan here. I give them away to somebody who would love to have one grow on. So the only thing is that the shipping cost I would need to have covered. Other than that, if I can see there's something viable that I can try to grow on, that is what I do. So this might not be something for everybody and I fully understand that. Once upon a time, I was also like, are you kidding me? But I've come to the realization after all these years that doing this is absolutely no detriment to the orchid whatsoever. On the contrary, if you are limited for space and your orchid is growing great, then you know what? You've got a great setup, it's working for you. You can make a division, you can keep the orchid contained to match your grow space. Should my luck ever change one day, there's no way I'm going to be making these radical decisions. I would try to invest in bigger pots and make my plants grow, grow, grow. But under these circumstances, this is the next best option and it works for me, it works for the orchid. So I just wanted to show you that once I finish my little initial rubbing and massaging, I then start to go from the root with the root ball from bottom towards the top and work my way into the orchid that way. And another thing when it's warm and breezy outside, I'm constantly misting to keep the root ball wet because that is what it's used to. So I shall relieve her of this microfiber. And if you're queasy about seeing new roots being damaged, Trust me, I am too. I am. But only when the orchid is desperate for every root. Not in a case like this. Then I'm just saying thank you very much for giving me the opportunity to be able to do this to you in order to keep you healthy and have you stick around in my collection. So, I mean, okay, I'm going to show you some wonderful roots. Please don't hate me. I think this is the best way to go about it. And I've not been disappointed yet. Sometimes I've had an orchid that has gone the different direction than I assumed, but I've learned from it. 
I've learned from it and I'm not going to make that mistake again as much as I can actually anticipate what orchids will do. I will not be so bold as to say, oh, I know, I know what each one is doing. Every season is different, behaviors are different, pests might come in. There's so many factors that will change any kind of condition and circumstances. And that is something also that I bear in mind. But I can only take care of what I can take care of and what I see present day. I cannot predict the future to 100%. What I can do is make sure that what I have gained knowledge-wise over the years growing in this method, that I can take that and apply it. And that is the tag that I squeezed into, I can't see, sorry, that I squeezed into the and wedged into the cut. So we've gotten at least that one out. So the, the orchid is now loose. The separation has been healed and I shall keep going and I'll be back when we get closer to what I'm trying to achieve here in order to see if I need to cut her one more time. Okay, so I'm coming into the hollow here now. I'm going to be very, very careful here. This is where I have to take my time as well. I'm going in one like a bead at a time as per usual. Let me get you in a little bit closer. See if that will work. There is no room to be rushing now. This is literally closed clippers going in one like a bead at a time. And then if I need to pick one out, I open them so that I'm not having to work with tweezers. But I go in closed clippers. And there's a lot of activity in the background, so I hope that you can hear me okay. But basically, this is what I'm doing now. I'm being a little bit more selective now with what I'm taking off. And being very protective of this area because of the new roots. Right now I can see I've got one big piece and one smallish piece and both have the lead. So if I were to keep one piece, then I would have a much smaller plant with a one single leaf as opposed to a huge large orchid with two leads. However, I am still hopeful that in some time in the future, the cut will provoke a growth. Oh, it's still fine will provoke a growth either before or after the cut. So either piece should get a second lead. That is my opinion. And I hope that eventually the hormones will kick in and make it happen. So you can see that I'm really, really digging my way in one bit at a time. And I'm taking off old roots now that were right in the center here. So they'll be gone shortly. And another thing, super important, keep them wet. They liked it wet. They grew super well when it was wet. Don't stop now. Don't forget, just keep them wet. Right, so I'm working my way still around. I'm finding dead roots and I take off what I see at that point in time. But another thing I'm doing now is as to get into the middle and separate the two pieces is to see this root right here, for example. I hope you can see that. So this is a root that's winding itself a, around and down into the media. So I'm kind of finding where it is and it belongs to this piece up here. And instead of taking it all the way out, I go to the first break and that's at least I save a root it might not have been as long as it was before but it's winding its way around making my job a little bit more difficult to separate the two pieces so as they find their way around the plant I actually find my way to them remove them 
so that I can get at whatever is holding the two together and then separate them. So it's a big puzzle. It's all fun and games. I'm not stressed. Um, this is something that doesn't um, phase me. I know that it is probably disturbing for some. And again, I do apologize for that. But I thought it would be interesting to film this procedure because what do you do if you have a root ball that's hard as a rock and it's completely contained with the media inside and you're not able to accommodate an orchid of this size, growing it into a specimen. You have two options, give it away completely or do what I'm doing, keeping it with you in the collection and obviously I'm hoping for blooms one day. But um, making sure it stays in a manageable size that you can have on your shelf or your growth space or, you know, outside in the summer where space isn't an issue. So for me, I'm not stressed about this at all. It is actually a wonderful problem to have. Can you imagine? I've got an orchid that has gotten so big I can't accommodate it. <laughs> and I have a root system that is so amazing that I can be generous and I don't have to tiptoe around it in order to save the orchid and then keep my fingers crossed I've saved her. To me, those are factors that I consider a luxury in this hobby. All right, I am not there yet, I don't think. I still have some roots that are really wanting to stay with their compadre. And I understand that. I fully understand that. And again, in my perfect world, this would not be necessary. I would just be growing an orchid the size of a mini bush. So this is not yet ready to come apart. Turn her around one more time and see where she is still holding on to her other half. There's a long root right here. That could be the culprit. We'll try to see if that was the case. There is another long root right there. There we go. We have two. Yoo-hoo, we have two. Look at them. I still have some work to do. And I will do that right now and I'll be back. Okay, time to wash the hands just a little bit just a little bit. In the meantime, also blast out any kind of small debris that we can from the inside of the roots. And I'm going to show you, if anybody's interested, a division, and then we'll talk. Because I made some mistakes the last time, and the people that wanted the orchids that I was giving away, or actually they asked for one piece of an orchid. All I wanted was the shipment. They were gracious, very kind. I was horrified and embarrassed. So I'm going to consider adding on what I'm talking about when I say, how are we gonna get this cut, this division to you if you want it. I don't want to cause problems. I don't want to have any kind of issues. My orchids are precious to me and they should be a happy occasion, whether they leave my home or they arrive at somebody else's home. So let me just show you, because now I have two and I'm gonna be keeping the little one. All right, so this is mine. 
because I can accommodate her and she can grow again if she wants. There's an eye back here. There's an eye here, which might amount to something. There's an eye right down there. And this growth has matured this year and it didn't bloom. So these two growths actually have matured. I've got the conky one. This orchid came from Orchid Garden. It's something else I want to mention in case somebody's interested. So I got it as a Sunya Green. That's what I bought her as, and I hope she's correctly labeled. And these things were chucked off like that when I got her, okay? So Orchid Garden in Poland, that's where I got this orchid from. Now, to the other piece, which at this point I will be potting up because I don't know here or there whether somebody is interested or not. But of course, I'm not going to discard this. So she will be potted up in my preferred setup, self-watering Lekka, as they, the most of them are. But here we are. Sunya Green, the piece that is not for sale, but I would like the shipping to be reimbursed. Oh, move over. Okay. A gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous big piece. And if I wanted to, I could split her again, but I don't think that is necessary. I think anybody that would want to receive this orchid would like the option to do that themselves. These again were bare when I got them. That is how I received her, unfortunately. But they're great storage. And then in the back here, there's an eye. That eye did not amount to anything at all. But there's, sorry for the jiggle. There's an eye back here. So that's two. I don't know if that's going to be one. There's a bulge coming here, three. She's growing brand new roots. And then there's another eye back here, that's four. So possibly four eyes, gorgeous new roots, grown really, really well. And if you are interested in this, then here's the thing. I'm going to set up my pots and we'll talk about it while I pot them up, okay? Let's talk potting up. Let's talk shipping. So my last experience was horrendous because I felt terrible. I had quoted an approximate 30 euros for the shipping of the pieces that were to go to other people who were so kind to actually say, I want it. So I said around 30 euros and it turns out that one was 47 and the other one was 40 euros. That is from the post office. That's not me marking anything up or trying to get something out of it by saying my orchids are not for sale, but I'm overcharging on the postage so that in that case, it feels like I'm somewhat getting something out of my orchids. Absolutely not the case. I would never do that. You get a slip from the post office directly. Um, I forward that to you. My email is in the description as is my PayPal. Both are in the description below. And I'm going to say, I'm going to hazard a guess that the shipping of this piece in the box it's going to fit into will cost around 40 euros. That is the post office and that includes tracking. And I think they are all now with tracking. When I pack them, when I pack the piece, it will definitely have the lecker still attached to it. So if it comes, when I, when I say bare root, it's not really, it will have lecker attached. I do not remove that. There might be a little bit of an added weight, but I'm going to guesstimate 40 euros for the shipping anywhere within Europe. If that is of interest to you, please, please shoot me an email. I don't want to disappoint anybody. I'm not saying my orchids are like, oh, I got to have a no. I'm just saying it's first, it, it, it's first come, first serve. I don't want to disappoint anybody or upset anybody. And I know people see the videos at different times of, of day. And, and it, it, you know, I do feel bad. I, I feel bad not being able to say yes to everybody, but I can only do so much regarding, you know, this, this is a gorgeous orchid. 
I don't want to have to give her away. Circumstances are that I have to do this and I'm doing it gladly because I know whoever is prepared to pay for shipping of that magnitude is actually very, very happy to have this orchid. Let me know if you're interested. And if there are no takers, that is absolutely fine too. I'm really, really not, honestly, I get it. I get it, times are tough, trust me, I know. If I had my way this point and I wasn't in such funny circumstances like most of us m might be, I don't know, I wouldn't even charge for the shipping. I would just be so happy that somebody wants to take care of one of my orchids and make it their own. Shipping would not be an issue. We would not be having this discussion. It would all be, hey, you want it? Send me your address and let's talk. You know what I mean? So I can't do that. Unfortunately, I cannot do that. And it, it, it bothers me. It does bother me. I'm not good with things like this. I'm a, I prefer to just say, here you are, enjoy and thank you, you know? So that's it. Send, please send me an email that you're interested. I need a full address. I need to also have your phone number. Those are the Spanish conditions. The mail conditions in Spain require a full telephone number. So if you can trust me with those details, then I will let you know an approximate day of shipping. Now is anyway a very good time to send orchids. And uh, then it will probably last, I have to say Don Quixote is responsible. Probably 10 labor days, not including weekends. So that's how long it can take for this piece to arrive to where you are in Europe. Except of course, if you're in Portugal, it takes two days. I was amazed. But anyway, I dither, um, I'm yapping. I hope I got the message across. If you have any questions, of course, let me know. I'll pot this up and I'll be right back. And here they are separated. Let's see what they do. And I just wanted to finish off by saying thank you so much for watching, for taking the time to listen to me ramble. And for example, I just had a thought when I said 40 euros, please do not send anything to PayPal in order to secure the orchid in case that is what you want to do. Just send me an email and I will take the first one who comes in and says, yes, I want her. Here's my address. Here's my phone number. And I will be in touch with you to tell you that I've got the message and that things will be taken care of and I will let you know on what day she is going to be shipped and only then when you get the post office um, document that I will forward you, only then would I request a payment because if it is 35 euros, if it is 32 or maybe 43 euros, I don't want the, uh, to have a back and forth and I hope that you understand that. And let's, um, let's see if anybody wants this piece right here, the big one then uh, please let me know. If you're wondering why I haven't taken the sheath off, because it does look dry, but it still has sort of a humid, wet texture. So I'm going to just leave off and not peel that off at this point in time. Too soon, too soon. So let me know. Look at this piece here. <laughs> this looks like the piece I had when I got her, minus all the back bits, but she looks like how I remember her size wise. <laughs> Okay, a vigorous grower, love her to bits. Unfortunately, two years in a row, the blooms have blasted. The piece that is going away is the one that tried to bloom again this year and the buds dried up. So let's see what happens and whoever wants this and gets this, it'll be fun to compare notes in the future. Just saying. <laughs> Thank you everybody for watching. I really appreciate it. And I hope that you found this somewhat interesting and I hope as well to see you next time. So take care, stay safe. Bye.